Hi, I'm Stephen Mansfield. And I'm David Holland. We want to welcome you to this opportunity for us to spend a little time talking about our new book, The Faith and Values of Sarah Palin, What She Believes and What It Means for America. You know, Stephen and I have collaborated in the past, which means he's a glutton for punishment. <laughs> uh, we worked on a Paul Harvey book last year that was really exciting mm -hmm. uh, to work on. Uh, focusing in on some of these uh, characters who dance across the world stage or the stage of, of American history for a time that are extremely interesting has been something that we've, we've really enjoyed. You know, you're a historian by training, I'm a journalist by training, and that makes us both hungry researchers. Yes. And the research process for this book was particularly gratifying. Well, you know, our publisher was very generous and uh, provided the money for us to get everywhere we needed to go. And we spent a fascinating week or more uh, up in uh, Alaska. Yeah. Uh, we went to Sarah Palin's hometown. We visited with her pastors. We visited with family members. We, we had a very wonderful moment or two, an hour or so, in, uh, in uh, the Heath's home, as we've, as we've said before, uh, just learning about their culture. And it was, it was fascinating because, I, as we say in the book, uh, really, Sarah Palin's childhood was as close to a frontier childhood as it could be. And this, yeah. is, this is what people have to understand. That's not hagiography. This book is not endorsing her. It's not, uh, you know, this is not a campaign book or commissioned by anybody in Palin world. Um, but, the, but the reality is that Sarah Palin's childhood was closer to that of Abraham Lincoln's than it would have been to, say, the Kennedys. Uh, it's closer to that of those who grew up on the frontier in the 1800s. Uh, in the lower 48 than to the average person living, you know, just a, a sort of suburban life today. And so it was, it was really good for us to, to go up there to see the great big stack of moose antlers in the front yard of Chuck Heath's house, to meet Chuck Heath himself, uh, her father, to meet, uh, to meet the family members, to see what culture's like, to know that when she was growing up, you know, men literally disappeared into the mountains and came back out with pack mules, you know, loaded down with pelts or whatever, uh, a la Jeremiah Johnson. I don't mean to oversell it, but it was so important for us to be there, and I'm very grateful our publisher got us there. Yeah, one of the quotes Stephen brought to the book was, uh, and I, I love it, uh, is that geography is destiny. Mm -hmm. uh, and you really cannot understand Sarah Palin without understanding what it means to be an Alaskan. That doesn't mean that she's anything exceptional. It just means, again, if our goal in this book is to help people understand her, you have to understand the geography. You have to understand the cold. Right. You have to understand her connection to the land. You have to understand the fact that she would literally be uh, shaken out of bed at two or three in the morning on a school day to go moose hunting with her father. Right. We really un try to unpack the whole spiritual side of Sarah Palin, you know, something we think was probably handled, uh, was m over managed in her own biography. Uh, and Dave, you're a journalist. I mean, I, I don't understand why. I, I mean, I understand politics fairly well and I understand history and our moment in history. But as a journalist, wh how, why is it that so many of the journalists that are writing about her have just abandoned restraint, abandoned? I mean, I guess we shouldn't be that surprised that they abandoned maybe character. But some of the leading journalists in our country have just lost their minds and become embarrassments when they talk about her. Why is that? It really is uh, almost impossible uh, for people to be objective about Sarah Palin. And this is something we really explore at some, in some length in the book. Uh, in particular, one of the things I think that we point to that maybe uh, very few other, if anyone, has really put their finger on mm -hmm. the, the way we were able to do that is why she is so polarizing. Uh, we believe that she stands on three fault lines in this country that are dividing the country uh, and very few politicians uh, really hit all three of these fault -like mm -hmm. line buttons like, like she does. Uh, the, the conservative liberal divide, the secular uh, Christian divide, and the urban rural uh, yeah. division that's taking place in our country. So one of the things we've done in the book is we've tried to, to sort through all these accusations. There, were, as an, there was an avalanche of them uh, during the, the presidential campaign. Of course, that's understandable is why the, the, sure. the, the, the stakes for that presidential election were so huge in the minds of so many people. It, it justified in those minds any type of personal destruction was really yeah. warranted in their, in their minds. In addition to going after some of these, these fault lines, in addition to going after some of these lies, we've also in this book uh, developed some background chapters that I think really help provide the context for Sarah Palin. Um, we provide, a, there's a whole chapter on Alaska, for example, that really, really kind of shows people what, what Alaska was like in her day, uh, in, in the, the time in which she was growing up. There's a, there's a chapter on Pentecostalism, which is something that's coming into its own in our American culture, and yet it's still sort of vilified. Uh, it's, it's, it's still misunderstood. I mean, how many times have you seen a movie 
uh, in which it's the Pentecostal figure who is the child molester or the or the murderer or or whatever. Uh, it's a it's a it's a it's a pathetic trend in our culture. Um, but I think that Pentecostalism is becoming one of the largest movements in world in world Christianity, right. and so it's, it was interesting to do that. And then, of course, we've got a, an entire chapter uh, on the spiritual issues, not not so much the spiritual issues, but the religious issues and the religious preferences that came into play uh, during the 2008 election. That's something that we've not seen done before. So we, we've written a different kind of book. We've we've not just tried to do a biography, although certainly the storyline is there. We've tried to analyze. We've tried to provide context. Um, we've tried to provide meaning, and, and we've even written chapters like, you know, Seven Things Sarah Palin Needs to Know, uh, in an attempt to sort of identify her place in American history, uh, say the things that need to be said here as she's probably gearing up for a presidential run, right. um, and, and sort of try to frame her, frame the national understanding of her as she continues to be a, a prominent personality on our political scene. A fascinating subject. We believe we've handled it in a way that's fresh uh, and, and, and interesting uh, to a wide uh, spectrum of people, regardless of, of which side of this Sarah Palin polarized field that you're on. Uh, so we encourage you to pick up a copy of The Faith and Values of Sarah Palin, What She Believes, and What It Means for America.